Um, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, I'm a postdoc at uh, Max Bees Group uh, in Northeastern University. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, role of dynamical forces in organ development. Um, in I, my, our model organism is Cooper vesicle in Jebrafis. So, which is you can see in the top image, it is a, a spherical monolayer of epithelial cells, and it is moving through tail bud cells. I'm going to discuss how uh, different forces contribute to the, its shape changes. And we use laser ablation experiment and 3D vertex model to see uh, the contribution of these dynamic forces. Uh, so before I start, uh, I would like to uh, thank my co-authors of this work. Uh, I have We have done this work during my last postdoc uh, with Lisa at Syracuse University. And all the experiment data I'm going to show today is done by Emma, Anna Maria, Oshama, and uh, Lan. And so Heidi and Lan um, help to help laser ablation experiment. And all the experiment was done in uh, MAC lab. So with that, uh, let's get started. Uh, so if you see a human body, it's what comes to mind is always it's symmetric. We have two eyes, two legs, two hand, but if you if you look at at the interior part of the body, you would see that there is a asymmetry. Is that we have only one heart, and that is in on the left side of the body, one liver that is on the right side of the body, and this is normal positioning of the organ. But you can have a scenario where you have the mirror image where you see the heart on the right side of the body and the liver on the left side of the body. So this patterning, uh, but is called left-right patterning. Um, and this is very important. Uh, one in 10,000 people will have this mirror image. Uh, in, But when you have a abnormal arrangement, for example, uh, a liver or heart on the middle part of the body, then those embryo is very fertile. So getting of congenital heart disease of those embryo is 50 to 100 percent, whereas in the normal positioning of the organ, it is less than 1 percent. And the mirror image is 3 to 5 percent. Uh, so we try to understand what is the origin of this left-right patterning. So we use Cooper vesicle, uh, which is left-right organizer of the geographies. So geographies uh, is like uh, uh, centimeter scale uh, um, uh, fish, and then this is you can see this yolk, and this is uh, the Cooper vesicle. The green spot is the Cooper vesicle, uh, and it is there is important structure attached to it, which is called notochord, which is again another type of tissue or a spine like structure. And as it um, develops, this Cooper vesicle moves through the tail bud cells, which is over here. So, what we notice is that at early somatized stage, this uh, Kupfer vesicle it is sp perfectly spherically symmetric, and it is one layer of epithelial cell. And if you uh, notice, then there are uh, there are equal number of cells in the top and the bottom. But at at later at each somatized state, you would see there are more number of cells on the top, and the very few uh, and less number of cells in the bottom. And because of this asymmetric distribution of the cells. Uh, and one of the important uh, uh, thing is that the Cooper vesicle is uh, uh, inside. You have fluid filled uh, lumen, so this part is lumen. Uh, because of this uh, asymmetric distribution of uh, the cells, um, there is also uh, it distorted the cilia distribution inside this fluid filled lumen. So every every cell has a cilia attached to it, which is pointing towards this fluid filled lumen. And because of the asymmetric anterior posterior asymmetry, uh, there are more number of cilia in the top and the bottom. And the, this every every KV has a like 50 to 100 uh, cells. And we, only this um, small changes in asymmetric distribution of cilia gives rise to a fluid flow, which is always from left to right, counterclockwise rotation. And in, this is shown in here. There is a micrometer size particle, uh, you can see this always going from left to right. And it is known that this left-right fluid patterning uh, uh, is the cause of, of, of the left-right uh, 
patterning in the body. So there is a, a, a the shear stress due to this uh, left right fluid flow is sensed around this uh, around left side of the anterior part of the organ, and that is uh, that trigger downstream signaling for the left right patterning. But today, uh, uh, th this is very amazing because Margaret is going to talk about filaments in the later part of the talk. Uh, with 50 cilia, uh, it's it can generate this uh, nice uh, fluid flow inside this lumen at low Reynolds number. Um, but today I am going to talk about mainly the first part of the uh, problem uh, is that how does the cilia distribution changes or how the KB removably changes um, due to different forces. So our main goal is, is the how do dynamic forces as it moves to the Tilbert cells uh, the KB moves to the Tilbert cells, changes its shapes. Uh, so our, uh, so just to remind you, this is uh, uh, the KB, the one layer of epithelial cells, spherical or monolayer of epithelial cells, moving through this uh, Tilbert cell, which is marked in the uh, red color. And this is the notochord, or uh, a spine like such a notochord. As, as the notochord uh, get uh, along extended due to the development, it pushes uh, the KB uh, and that is the motion. And so our, our hypothesis is that due to this motion, um, it since it's move, moving through this tail bar cell, which is a viscoelastic medium, it uh, gets a drag forces from the medium. This is similar to what you have seen, uh, what you know that the strokes drag on a sphere or uh, um, in a Newtonian fluid. So, but in this case, this is more complex. The sphere in this case, it's deformable and the medium is not Newtonian, but viscoelastic. This is very important because uh, even the motion uh, is very slow because this is moving at one micrometer per minute. Uh, the viscosity in the medium is very large. It has been shown by Armonger that Tilbert, uh, uh, Jebrafis Tilbert is close to fluid solid transition. That means viscosity diverges. Uh, and then this, uh, can give rise to large forces, even though motion is very slow. Uh, and recently, this uh, this um, drag forces can lead to uh, uh, shape changes in the egg. Um, it has been shown recently. Uh, so our hypothesis is that uh, that cell shape changes are caused by drag forces generated as the KB move through this uh, surrounding tissue. Mm -hmm. um, so we develop a mechanical model. Uh, which is 3D vertex model with multiple tissue type. Uh, before I go into this, I would like to thank Tao and Jane for sharing uh, this 3D vertex model code uh, basic uh, before it uh, they uh, uh, openly uh, publish it uh, so that we could start working on that. So in that, uh, in this 3D vertex model, the cells as a model as a deformable uh, polyhedron and is a space filling um, a a polyhedron. So there is no gap between um, uh, to polyhedron and the energy function of this in such cells in this collective, you can write as a volume, um, there's a volume elasticity term and the surface elasticity term. And there is the third term is the interfacial tension between different tissue type. Since our in our model, we have three different tissue type. Uh, so we have tail bar cells, which is marked in the gray color, and then KB cell, which is one layer of epithelial cells, and then lumen, we treat as a few um, uh, cells, which is marked in the yellow color. And the post anterior part of the KB is marked in um, orange color, and the posterior part of the uh, uh, KB is marked with uh, purple color. So with that, once you have the energy, then you can uh, get a conservative force from the energy. And then you have we have this Brownian uh, term, but then we also have a dynamic forces, which is a cell propulsion term, which we apply only to the posterior, posterior part of the forces or anterior part of the forces. The rationale being that there is a, a, a pu uh, pushing forces from the notochord, uh, and then there is a, a pulling forces due to the uh, lamellophoria of posterior cells. Uh, with that, um, the, in the model, we could uh, we could get a target shape index, uh, similar to, I think you have seen in many other talk previously that you can draw a shape, shape index in this, uh, in this vertex model. So in this, in the 3D, you can, if this is S naught by V naught to the power two by third, and as you increase this S, this target, target shape index for smaller value of S net S, uh, the cell would behave like a shear, but as you increase the S, it, it gets elongated. And 
and this is uh, um, uh, uh, it has been shown that this um, for smaller value of s uh, uh, the shape index would uh, the uh, cell would behave like a solid and the larger value of s uh, is behave like a fluid where it can change its neighbors um, so this is in the 3D vertex model, Lisa and Max work where they showed that you can get a solid to fluid transition as you go from um, uh, this uh, safe index from 3.8, this in 2D, but in it has been also so in 3D Voronoi model where you can, uh, it, this uh, number is around 5.4. So uh, it can, you can show this again, solid to fluid transition in this case. Uh, so now with that, we can, as you, as you can see that we can vary uh, this twisted fluidity in our model. Uh, so, uh, and by changing this shape index, and we also also can vary the forces uh, from the anterior and the posterior, and and improve the dynamics. Um, um, and and so this is the what we see. So what first we start with equal forces from the top and the bottom, and then see what happens uh, as it moves through these tail bud cells. And what we see is that um, at equilibrium, when there is no forces, there is no dynamic forces. Uh, the if you compute the number of and uh, anterior cell, the you can draw a line and then count the number of anterior cell and then on uh, the number of posterior cells, and and that number is close to one. But as it moves through the tail bar cell, this number quickly goes to uh, greater than one point five, which which has been seen in the experiment. So there are more number of cells. So that's nice that we could uh, uh, we could see the same safe changes seen in the experiment in the control embryo, uh, and we can now. Uh, ask the question, how does this different forces, uh, magnitude of the forces and the tissue fluidity affect these shape changes? So that's what I, what I am showing here. Uh, this is the speed. We would see that at smaller, when the tissue fluid, uh, fluidity is, um, the S0 is value is small, when it behaves like a solid, even though you have put large forces, you would not see any a propulsion of KV because it's jammed, you cannot move. But as you increase this S0 value, when it, um, then you, you would see that motion of the KB and then maximum velocity of the equilibrium velocity of the KB is around this. And then this is the corresponding uh, safe index, um, uh, the N over NP, uh, with the number of uh, anterior posterior asymmetry. Uh, uh, and we need uh, sa the safe changes occur when you see the large uh, on the tissue fluidity is greater than 5.4 um, and uh, you have uh, a large amount of forces on the on the. Oh, sorry. What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, but okay. Okay. The, but as I mentioned, you the motion of KB is very slow. It's like it's moving one micrometer per minute. Uh, so uh, is that fast enough? Uh, to how do you prove that? And how do you prove that this? How do you vary this x-axis and the y-axis in the experiment? Uh, so what do we do today? I'm going to talk about mostly on the y-axis. How do you vary the forces on the KV? So what we do uh, as we hypothesis that there is a forces from the top, not a cord, uh, which pushes uh, the KV. So what we did, our uh, uh, J Amak uh, in Emma and Anamedia, they ablate the not a cord, uh, and now. There is no using laser. We ablate the notochord, and there is no physical connection between notochord and the KV. So, and let's see what happens. So, what we see is that even after uh, the uh, laser ablation of the notochord, even there is no physical connection between uh, these two forces, um, KV still moves. So it does not stop. But we carefully we now track uh, the motion of uh, center of the KV for many embryo, uh, both in control and um, and the uh, not a quarter ablation experiment. And what this is the data, what do you see? The speed of the KV is increasing function of soma stage. Uh, whereas uh, we ablate the not a quarter between three to four somatized stage. And we see that in the not a quarter ablation experiment, uh, the speed of the lumen decreases as a function of somatized stage. So now uh, that means uh, at low Reynolds number, force is proportional to the velocity. Uh, that means we are able to reduce the forces on KB uh, due to this uh, uh, notochord ablation. So there is a there is a force from the notochord we are able to reduce. Now we we then ask the question: What is the effect of this uh, reduced forces from the notochord? So now we what we do is that we track not the cells now we track bigger volume like cell 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 uh, 
um, this lumen, the in, uh, out, outer boundary of the lumen cell cells interface, um, because it is easier are in the notochord ablation experiment. So now with that, we can now uh, quantify any shape or any uh, any uh, uh, quantity. So we mostly mostly look at uh, the radius of gyration because it it takes care of all the boundary, uh, and we we found that this is the uh, one of the uh, uh, best way to do that um, so for so and we use the ratio between um, uh, radius of gyration in the along anterior posterior axis and the left right axis so for a sphere uh, for a circle it would be one for a oblate shape it would be one uh, it would be less than one and for prolate shape it would be uh, uh, greater than one uh, so now what, this is the data of what we see in the control experiment when uh, there is a force from the uh, notochord the top part of the KB is uh, is flat, as you can see. Uh, as and when there is no forces from the notochord, uh, it's elongated along the y-axis. Uh, so and this is a, this is the ratio between the shape parameter as a function of somatosis. As you can see, this shape parameter increases uh, for the case of notochord ablation experiment, and in the control, it remains uh, less than uh, it's 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 both are oblate, but the magnitude of the forces is. Uh, magnitude of the shape parameter is smaller in the in the case of control. And if you do with the at at five six uh, average about five six and seven somatized stage, which is the uh, later part of the development, uh, is that uh, it is significantly differ uh, the shape parameter. Uh, uh, so now, uh, so we can confirm that drag forces uh, from the notochord uh, drag forces are large enough to change the shape of a cell interface, or uh, in this case, say um, the lumen uh, organ. Uh, next, we ask the question for uh, uh, you can do the same thing in our um, uh, uh, simulated 3D vertex model. So, as I mentioned, that there is a forces from the top and the bottom. So, to mimic the notochord ablation, we had to uh, we can we can just uh, say that forces from the top is zero. So, the notochord ablation it mimics the notochord ablation. And this is the what I have showed you earlier. This is the control experiment where you see this top part of the lumen is flat in uh, when when there is a both forces from the top and the bottom, but what happens when you the we have forces only from the uh, 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 bottom, like the posterior forces. In that case, we see that uh, uh, KB is elongated along the y-axis, and 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 we can we quantify this um, the lumen shape in both experiment and simulation. Uh, you can see that uh, it matches uh, remarkably well both experiment simulation and that. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, that order parameter is uh, much higher in the notochord ablation experiment. Uh, next thing we try to do, uh, what is the effect of the posterior cell ablation? Uh, because uh, even after uh, uh, ablating the notochord, KB still moves. So what we do now um, is that we ablate few cells at the center of the uh, middle plane of the KB, uh, six to eight cells around this position, and see what is the effect. And Again, we see that it still moves um, um, on the motion, but thus it changes the shape. So what we see is that propulsion speed does not affect when you ablate this posterior cell because we, we, the, the, the perturbation is very small, but it affects the shape. Um, for example, now in this case, it's more oblate shape. It, it is the order, um, the shape parameter is much smaller than the control. And then we wonder, uh, what is happening, and so uh, we 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 do the same thing in our uh, uh, in the model, and we see exactly same thing uh, what we have seen in the experiment that it is uh, it's the it is more oblate oblate than the uh, control experiment when we have only the forces from the top, and so we match in this case we match the uh, propulsion speed in the uh, experiment and and do the simulation, and this is the. Uh, lumen step changes in the experiment and simulation in the posterior cell ablation case. Uh, so in this case, in the posterior, when you ablate the posterior cells, uh, the order parameter is much smaller than the control. Um, and so now uh, some of you must be wondering, um, uh, is there any simple way to understand these shape changes? Because now we are looking at a, a fluid field membrane as it moves through uh, uh, tail burst cells. So we developed a um, a hydrodynamic model. Uh, we we treat lumen as a, a so now there is no cells in the in this model. We 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 treat lumen as a deformable two D membrane in and moving through a viscous fluid. So we use Stokesian dynamics. Uh, so the lumen is formed with a 
uh, in number of uh, connecting bits and then we have a connecting potential then and the bending potential and, and then you have this area term which is also for the uh, area hp job uh, when it moves um, and then we use uh, over dam equation motion um, with uh, uh, if is is coming from on the body force is coming from the gradient of this potential and the, this is the external force of the dynamic force we, we apply similarly as we, we did in our uh, experiment and, and thus uh, 3d vertex model so there is forces from the top and the forces from the bottom and and mu is the uh, mobility matrix usual rodney Braga tensor and g is the ocean tensor so with that uh, i i this is the what we see here we uh, in the left we am sh i'm showing the motion uh, when we have both forces uh, equal forces from the top and the bottom and when there is no forces uh, uh, from the top, which is which mimics notochord ablations, and the right you 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 would see that uh, when the case of posterior cells posterior cells ablation when there is a force only from the top, so that you can see that how it happens. Um, and you can you can even compare the control and notochord uh, posterior cell ablation. This is much uh, um, the it is um, the order parameter would be much smaller than the uh, the control and the in the in the notochord ablation case, it is it's elongated. So with the simple model could explain um, what is happening uh, in the experiment. Um, so with that, uh, so what we, we conclude is that uh, dynamic forces are important for shape changes in lumen. Um, in the notochord ablation, uh, ablation the, uh, this shape is more elongated and, and which elongated along anterior posterior axis, whereas in posterior cell ablation, it is elongated along the left right axis. Um, and the, both experiment simulation and our deformable uh, particle model uh, um, predict those uh, safe changes. Uh, next, we ask the question, what happens? Uh, we now know that these dynamic forces are important for the uh, safe changes in the lumen. And, and now next question uh, is that how does affect the cilia distribution uh, or the left-right patterning at the later stage of the development? So what we see is that uh, notochord ablation significantly reduces the uh, cilia distribution, for example, I, uh, this is the plot where I'm showing. Uh, it does not affect the number of cilia, but it affects the uh, uh, number of cilia in the top and the bottom, the asymmetry. Um, and this is also predicted by our 3D vertex model. Uh, so dynamic forces are contributing to remodeling of the KB cell shapes. Um, but this perturbation, this small perturbation is not enough to destroy anterior posterior asymmetry because there are there is also there are many uh, few, few the large number of cells on the top and the bottom. Um, Robert, the... You have to, just a couple of minutes left just to let yeah. you know. Yeah, I'm just uh, next slide. I'm going to finish it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, but it also uh, does not affect LR patterning um, uh, at later stage of the development. So this is my um, uh, summary of the talk. Is that. Uh, we have shown that laser ablation experiment demonstrates the dynamic drag forces in developing embryo are sufficiently large to cause change of a shape of an organ. And our 3D vertex model is able to capture these drag forces. And models need to account these dynamic forces. Even the motion is very slow because the tissue viscosity is apparently very high. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, thank you all uh, for listening uh, our work.